Do you have a community movement you'd like to launch in the world? For four years, our guest has been connecting, educating, and celebrating the Boston startup community. And she's sharing how she built a thriving, volunteer-driven, and beloved event from ideation to implementation. <laughs> Stay tuned for the Startup Life Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Startup Life Live Show. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, startup founder to first-time founders. After raising four businesses of my own, I now help newly minted business owners sleep through the night by giving them peace of mind. And that's right, using my Andy Licious strategy, solutions, insights, and inspiration, these founders are building profitable and sustainable businesses without spending a fortune or wasting valuable time. And I am so delighted you carved out time to tune in and up your founder game. We are streaming live right now on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and Twitch, thanks to this delicious platform called StreamYard. Those of you tuning in live, please use this opportunity to network with each other, because I don't know about where you are, but here in Boston, we're not seeing each other. So how do you network, right? You go to a live event like the Startup Life live show and meet people in the comment threads, get to know each other, share your LinkedIn URLs, share your social media uh, handles and connect with each other because you never know where your next collaboration is going to come from. And hey, if you know someone who would benefit from our conversation today, go tag them, bring them over, because we're going to have an amazing time with our guest. For those of you watching the replay, thank you for investing in you and your business. And be sure to click that subscribe button right there and the bell icon so you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. So here's the scoop about our amazing guest today, Stephanie Rulick. She is the founder of Startup Boston, a volunteer-driven movement that is organizing events and initiatives, connecting, educating, and celebrating the startup community. And I'm just gonna bring up a little something here so you guys can get a really good idea. Look at this, five days, 70 events, 250 speakers, 100% virtual, 100% free, and hello, it's happening next week. This flagship event is an amazing opportunity that provides startup founders, employees, and enthusiasts with the tools they need to both start and scale their company. And I gotta tell you, this is an event that is beloved around Boston. And when Stephanie is not busy creating this amazing week-long event, she's a co-founder of a startup, of a business called N Dash. And it's a content marketplace where she leads customer success and community. So I hope everybody's ready to sit back and learn from this amazing guest, but let's give her a real warm welcome, a virtual warm welcome. Hey, Stephanie, welcome to the Startup Life Show. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so thrilled that you're here. And I'm so thrilled that we are live and we're able to share with everybody, not just now, but for you. this will be evergreen content about how you took this idea, this wanting to bring founders together, the startup community, those who serve the startup community together and create a level of community and engagement we don't often see anywhere you know, in the States or elsewhere in the startup community. So I, for one, am so grateful that you're here sharing all this great info. So let's, um, let's get started with, first of all, a huge congrats, the launch story, you know, before we get there, I just want to say everybody, Stephanie already has 2000 RSVPs I'm for so a excited. virtual event. Can, another round of applause. Yeah, I'm so happy. Oh, that happened yesterday morning. I was thrilled. I was like, oh my God, this, this just happened. Okay. <laughs> I know I told you earlier, um, but it usually, we never hit past like the 2000 attendee marks until either like the Sunday night before or sometime Wednesday, the week of. So, okay. So I'm not celebrating the small wins, right? Like I'm going to embrace this. 
<laughs> and I know there are folks who are out in the virtual world, either now or during replay, who are event planners. So they know. Um, okay, good. <laughs> they know how hard it can be to drum up that business and how often, you know, get those RSVPs up and how often it's just days before you go live that people oh. are like, boom. Oh my, yeah. I remember in like 2017 when we launched the first conference and I, I never organized or have been like the sole organizer of event before and let alone a free event. And just to be like, that's Sunday night. I'm like, I hope people show up. I don't know what's going to happen. Like the attending numbers weren't as high I was hoping for and definitely a learning curve. So for yes. anyone who's planning a free event, usually people don't sign up until the day before <laughs> or the day of. So don't worry. <laughs> Let's bring up one of our favorites. Hi, David Chang. David, hey, he's also speaking at Startup Week. Everyone okay, should when? go and attend his session. Yes. What time? What time? Oh, I should oh, know God, this. Yeah. I okay, don't. Well, I'm a bad event promoter right now. Okay. <laughs> I want everybody to take in the fact that seriously, I, we do this with, with Founders Live Boston, the monthly pitch event I co-host. We really, you know, it's the same thing. The RSVPs come trickling and trickling, and then you get that flurry you know, 24, 48, sometimes 72 hours before. So bravo, because I know that when you were thinking after COVID hit and Boston shut down, what, ruh -ruh, what are we going to do with our event? But let's, I want to go back to the beginning because you were, were what? I mean, how is it that you were compelled, Stephanie? Did you wake up one day and go, I want to create a week-long event with all these speakers and, and get these volunteers on board? Like, who does that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to know what compelled you. Oh, man. It was honestly kind of along those lines. But let me take it a step farther. Um, so what happened was, is in August of 2016 is when myself and my other co-founders launched Dash which is my full-time job, as Andy mentioned in the beautiful intro she made for me. Um, so during that time frame, I was really new to the startup world. I was also just new to like what I would call adult world because I graduated college in 2013. So I was like, I have no network. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Um, and I have a lot of questions and I want them answered. So it was around that time frame I started to attend events. I started trying to figure out like, okay, like where can I go and meet people in the startup scene? Where, which events are really going to give me the playbook for how to start and scale a company. So as a result, um, I couldn't really find what I was looking for. I just really wanted to go and have like the events that say step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, all the way up to, you know, step 100. As all founders know, it takes a, a lot of years to build a great company. So as a result, I started Startup Boston Week um, with the idea to one, connect everyone because I myself wanted a network and I'm sure other people wanted one too. And two, to create events that really do kind of roadmap out the how to build and scale your startup. So kind of took all of that to really create Startup Boston Week in 2017. And we've really taken it from there. Okay, so curious minds want to know, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what you just said, though, it was so important you know, that, well, I really wanted to do, you know, this, this, but, and I would love it if someone could just give me the playbook. Yeah. But you had to create the playbook and you had to come up with the name. You had to come up with what it was going to feel like. You had to choose the time you were going to have it. How is it that you chose September? Oh, man, this is not something good for me to say on air, but I literally threw a dart at the map and was like, okay, it's, you know, I think at that point it was... November of 2016 and I was alone. There was no one else on the team at the time. And I was like, okay, I can single-handedly at this time, me, just myself, can pull together an event, like a conference by September. It sounds like a good time. Other people do conferences. It's before snowstorms hit New England. Like that was honestly my my oh thought my process. It was a uh, it wasn't the most mapped out strategy in the beginning. I'm not going to lie about but this that. Is, this is okay. You know, I am a firm believer that you pull on threads, you start pulling things together and you see what works and you or what doesn't work. You can plan for forever and still not have a clue at the end of the day of oh, how it's going to go. I'd rather definitely. just get started, 
start having the conversation, even if, if it's between you, the plants and your pets. You know? Oh yeah. In the beginning, it definitely was maybe a stuffed animal or two. I was like, <laughs> we're going to figure this out guys. Right? Like we've got this. Um, and I mean, just to piggyback off of what you said, like it could have been, if you don't pick a date and put it on the map, it's never going to happen. And I think planning this conference is similar to even launching a company. It's never going to be perfect. Like there's always more you could do. So just having that date lined up gave me a goal. It was a feasible goal for me because I think that gave me like what, 10 months at that point. Yes. Um, and then eventually I did. I found other people to tag along and join the initial team. So you're a team of, I want to say four in 2017. It was still a very small team, but we made it happen. We pulled together like 42 events in those five days. So on the Stephanie train. Come on. You know, right? Like that energy and that deliciousness. It's phenomenal. But viewers, the reason I brought up why September, you may have heard of a company called HubSpot. Their big inbound event is usually the first or second week here in Boston, yeah. which is huge. And it's like 20,000 people at the big convention center. It's for days, right? And yeah. You know, it's still, it doesn't matter. You can have the competition over there. They're meeting a different need. HubSpot, while certainly can, you know, help startups, it's meeting corporate need. It's meeting, you know, established enterprise businesses, marketing needs. So, you know, it has its own agenda. Yeah. So, you know, I, I actually even think the first year to piggyback off of it, I looked at the inbound dates and then decided to do it the week after. And I was like, well, just get the foot traffic to carry over. It'll be yeah. great. <laughs> Who else can I hear speak? You know? Yep, exactly. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the slipstream of the wind coming off of their big semi trailer. Um, oh, let's just say hi. Hi, Woodline. How are you doing? Hey. Now, this is a woman who just, correct me if I'm wrong, you just win the e for all Roxbury cohort 2020 finale with your incredible, beautiful dolls. Do you see those dolls that she has in her arms? Yes. Fusion dolls, folks. So F-U-S-I-O-N dolls. Go check out I'm telling you, amazing, amazing. So oh, congrats. Uh, I'd like, I love yeah, hearing this. <laughs> yeah, just put a little thing in the uh, comment section to confirm <laughs> that I've got everything right. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. I meet so many founders. I don't want to get them mixed up like you do with your kids, right? You oh, got good. it right. Confirming, <laughs> yes. Oh, we are so, so proud of you. Congratulations. And hey, AJ. Hey. Yeah, so this is the guy I, I co-host. seeing these people. This I is know. Awesome. <laughs> AJ and I are going to be at the opening party with our Founders Live Boston booth. Yes. Yes. Booth. Tell oh everybody my God, about I'm so excited. Party. I'm actually going to say something too about that. So for all, everyone who's watching, there's a lot of amazing startup organizations out there, like so many of them. So Founders Live along with about 20 other organizations are going to be virtually exhibiting this Monday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this way you can actually go to different tables, find out what events they're doing, what types of people attend their events, so that you can even get more involved and expand your network and really kind of learning from some of the best of the best. And I mean, Andy and Angie yeah. are some of the best of the best, so you should go either way. Go hang out Stephanie with them. Stephanie is right, of course. AJ and I are some of the best of the best. Um, we don't have a name for this LinkedIn user, but I want to say, yes, knowledge is so important. Networking is so important. And any startup needs a lot of help, especially at the beginning. Yeah. To scale the playbook is so important. Thank you, whoever you are on LinkedIn. And thank you for tuning in with that great, great comment. So, you know, so you sat down with yourself and you started to implement. So where did you find your, and folks, I love going into these details because I know someone out there is thinking about this themselves. So I'm <laughs> going to have, you know, Stephanie walk through some of the, uh, you know, challenges, the pitfalls, the moments that she took, just some of the process of how she thought so that it can help you, whether you're launching a startup or a movement and a community in your local area. So Stephanie, you, you started off saying, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna choose this date. Where did you go to find the volunteers? Were you already out there networking? Oh man, it's taking me back. I'm like, where did I find the volunteers? Um, so at the time I really, I was actually really not a great networker during 2017. So I did attend some networking events, but I had yet to really understand like, 
the way to network. And for some of you out there, you'll know what I mean. Like when you first start off, you're kind of like, honestly, you're kind of like flailing around at like these networking events. You don't know like how to figure out who to talk to or what to talk about or how to take that relationship a step farther after you attend an event. So just words of wisdom, we've all been there before. The more and more you go and network, the better you will be. But it's so difficult in the beginning and awkward, at least for me, because I'm actually, ironically, a huge introvert. I love staying at home. I love like being a homebody, even though I organize events. Irony at its <laughs> finest. I would say ambivert. Maybe ambivert. Yeah, because you do really well. Look at you right now. There's nothing <laughs> introverted about you, but maybe after this show, you have to go do some quiet time. Oh, yes. I like sit. I'm like, okay, we did that. We're going to make some more coffee, and now we're going to get back to work. Right. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, it's great. really important to network. Hi, Richard. Uh, great podcast host there. So you went out, and you weren't that good. So what did you learn about networking? Yeah, so I learned quite a different few things about networking. I guess to get started when I where I found the the volunteers just to get back to initial point for how to kind of really start a movement. So a lot of it honestly was creating a website, putting up a landing page, and then I found a lot of like meetup groups, Facebook groups that had similar interests because that was like what I felt the most comfortable with and I really just shared like, "Hey, I'm building this conference. Like it's really to connect the startup community. Like if you want to get involved, like would love to have you. Um, and I got a couple of bites. I got, you know, three bites for a four person team, which was great. It's all I really needed at the time. So it worked out. Um, and then when it really came time to actually start planning what the conference looked like to start planning, like how to put this together, um, going into it, I knew that I wasn't going to get a lot of sponsorship money because I was very new. Um, and there were no numbers to back it up. So I really went into it kind of thinking, okay, how do I pull this off for zero dollars and really started, you know, finding groups that had a similar audience that startup week was going to have to really be like, Hey, do you want to be a marketing partner? Um, I found, you know, sponsors that could donate stuff in kind for the event. Um, the CIC, for example, was such a great supporter since year one, they donated all their space. Um, for Startup Week, which is amazing. Huge shout out to them. I absolutely love those guys. I'm going to pop in right to CIC. They sponsor Founders Life Boston. You all are amazing. They have a beautiful building in downtown Boston, folks. So, and we get to, you know, have our events, Stephanie's too, and several floors, but the 20th floor with this gorgeous view of the city of the Charles River, you know, the history, it's right there. It's beautiful. And the support that this team gives, this is just a shout out to CIC Boston for helping yeah. folks put on a great event. All right, so you got them on board then? Yeah, so I it was a lot of just kind of one, finding marketing partners, so people that can really help share and promote the event. Because if you don't have money, you can't really afford to do social media ads. You also don't have a network to really get your name or you know organization out into like these newspapers. It's really hard, so you're kind of, bootstrapping, honestly, like the movement. So we found people that also really want to go and support um, the Boston startup ecosystem. And, you know, they shared the event and we had the venues that were also equally, you know, really excited about this too. And they donated the space and then it started getting pieced together. And about, in terms of the that, actual, how sorry. about influ how about influencers? Were you able to tap into people who had their thumb on the pulse of the community and were well known who could say, Hey, there's a great event here. I want to share it with you. Did you have folks like that help you? Yeah, we had some of those. I would definitely, I guess I would call them more so like marketing partners, but definitely the one that sticks out from 2017, who was such a huge supporter was Bobby Carlton. Oh, of Bobby. Yes. <laughs> of uh, Mass Innovation Nights and Innovation Woman. If you guys don't know her, definitely go check her out. But she was such an amazing support system. You know, she really helped share the event. She also helped connect me with some amazing speakers too. Um, and that also really helped to open up a door of like who else, um, you know, is out there in the startup ecosystem. And she's also exhibiting on Monday at the opening party. So you guys can go learn more there too. <laughs> That's great. And so now, you know, you're building it out. You're starting to decide and design your topics. Yes. And so I understand Stephanie's doing this without having ever proved her value proposition. You know, that's my favorite topic, MVP. Do people really want 
and yeah. what you're you're dealing out to them and will they pay for it or will they switch or will they all of those important things so when you were starting to create the agenda you know what you were yes. going to teach people and share and help you know, how did you know what would be important to folks yeah it's definitely it's improved over the years but in 2017 for year one um, I did two things. So the first is that a lot of the questions that were addressed in 2017's conference were questions I had. Um, as a co-founder of a company, as someone who was new to starting a company, new to customer success, new to really everything in startup life, um, I actually had the benefit of truly designing this conference in the shoes of what an audience member would be like, which at that time was me. Um, so a lot of the events just kind of originated by what I wanted answers to. Um, and then the other half of the events really came from taking to LinkedIn comments um, and like a Reddit comment threads, like really anything that, that people would post stuff about the startup world. And I just read their comments and be like, okay, what questions do you have? Like, what do you want to know? What are you still left being like, but what happens next? And that was also a great way to really kind of pull together um, that first conference. Brilliant. Everybody take that in. Brilliant marketing right there. Going to listen to what the audience is asking questions about. You can do that for your product and service as well. Get on threads, go to your competitors' threads and see where people are complaining or wishing that they had and go fill that hole for them with your product or service. There's so much you can find out by doing what we call social listening. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> so, so now you're leading up to the day, the week. Oh yes, I will never forget the, the night before the first startup week. I did not sleep. <laughs> I was just like anxiously laying in bed. Um, and the first day, it was that Monday morning, we had our first event, which was at like 8, 8 or 9 a.m. Um, and Jay Neely, he was on the 2017, 2017 team, and he was like my right-hand man that year. And I just like panic called him like right before the kickoff because we were in two different locations at the time. And I was like, let's say no one shows up to this event. And I was so, so nervous. Oh, my goodness. People did show up, though. It was nice. But... Yeah. We'll never forget that first day. <laughs> can relate. I mean, look, I've got a live show you know, twice a week. You never know who's going to show up. But to something where you've put in almost a year's worth of work and, you know, you've got speakers, you want them to be talking to at least two or three people in the room. <laughs> yes. Yes. We got those two or three. I think the first <laughs> event of that week only had about like 10 audience members. Yeah. Um, Hey, but at least people showed up. <laughs> so, so what did you learn? Because, you know, once you launch, right, there's so much learning that you can get. You can, you're going to get feedback. You're going to get the um, intake forms from everybody after they fill out, whether it's online or it's a hand, you know, handout that you give them for feedback. What did people share with you that you were able to say, okay, I have proven that the Boston startup community wants a week long event like this? which is of course, as Seth Godin says, sure it's been done before, but not by you and not for us. So what that means is Stephanie created this, not some other company or event planner. This is her take, her juice, her deliciousness that she's bringing. How did you feel at the end? Did you feel that you had proved your hypothesis? Oh my God, I think I just turned like so red as you said that I was like blushing. Um <laughs> So there were quite a few takeaways. Um, so year one, we had 2,100 people show up for Startup Week on a $300 marketing budget. Wait a minute, how many? 2,100 people in 2017 showed up and we only had $300 for marketing advertisement that year. I just have to come in and say, wow. Okay, so no complaining people about getting people to do what you need them to do <laughs> and you have no money. So I definitely took that as a win. I was also very honestly surprised. Um, I was just hoping for a couple hundred people at the very least. I was like, 500 would be a great number this year for year one. I'll take that. So I was very shocked and very humbled by the amount of people that wanted something like this and came out to really support this event. Um, Cause it truly was the entire community coming together. Like I could not have done this if, you know, marketing partners um, 
such as Bobby Carlton did not help share the event, or if people, you know, hosting the startup week, such as the CIC didn't go and donate their space. And there were dozens of more people involved in really supporting this and bringing it all together in that year one. So that in itself was such like, a, a great moment to be like, okay, the community does want this. Like everyone is chipping in to make this happen. Um, so I took that as like my green, let's go for it and like do it again next year flag. So I was like, yes. Um, now, and as someone who has like hit it out of the park, you know, the first time out, you're like, dang, that feels great. I'm always a little more nervous the second time. <laughs> Cause like, can I duplicate what I did? Can I replicate it? Can I do better? How, you know, how did you start addressing that as you started to plan the next year, 2018? Yeah, it, it became, I mean, it got a lot more fun. I will say that it was stressful, but it definitely was a lot more fun. Like, cause I really learned things year over year. I'm constantly being like, okay, like what do we need to do better next year? Like just to put this in preference, like I'm already planning 2021's event. I'm already like, okay, we're gonna do like these hundred things different next year. Like we got this. Um, so it's constantly kind of taking notes like throughout the entire year, um, regardless as to whether or not you know you wanna do it again and then just use those notes to really improve upon it. So what I learned from 2017 was, you know, 2017 was all about, let's make this event happen. Let's find out if people show up. Like, I hope it's great, but it's all about just make the conference happen. And then in 2018, the theme of that year was like, okay, we made the conference happen, people showed up, let's improve the event content. Like, let's really make sure that we're really asking people what they wanna learn. And it was all about really leveling up the content in Startup Week. And then it came to 2019, where the focus was, okay, now that we have, you know, learned some things about what people want to learn content wise, like, let's take that, continue doing that, but now also set up the conference in a really easy way to navigate for attendees. So we actually redid our tracks in 2019. So rather than themes for tracks, we actually made each track a, um, a department within the startup company so that way this event wasn't just for founders it was also for those startup employees so if you're in customer success you go to the customer success track if you're in data you go to the data track and so on and so forth so it was really kind of stepping it up a notch um mm -hmm. and then in 2020 got kind of turned on its head and learned all about virtual world so that happened <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a second i want to bring up a great question from aj yeah. Steph, can you comment on the importance of having feet on the ground and how to effectively recruit the right team to galvanize around your mission? Great question, Ape. Love that. I've learned a lot throughout the past couple of years, especially when it comes to building a volunteer team. Um, I'm a volunteer for this. Everyone on the team is really volunteering their team to give time to give back. Um, and definitely like the biggest thing I've learned from really finding people to join the team is that I'm not looking for the level of experience you've had building an event or doing marketing if you're on the marketing team or finding speakers if you're on the programming team. Like I'm looking for people that are really excited about the startup world and just want to help support one another because you can't teach that. Everything else, like I have so many training documents for how to go and organize an event and reach out to speakers, but everyone on the Startup Week team is there because they really truly do care about the startup community here and they want to give back and they want to help connect um, other people and really help them improve their businesses. So I think like, especially when building a volunteer team, like you need to look for that enthusiasm first and foremost, because you can't teach it. And then after that, it comes down to more of like, okay, like, are you responsible? Like what else have <laughs> I done? But the big thing I look for is always like that heart because uh, that's really what this is about. It is. And also you know, it helps you tap into it. Stephanie folks has the perfect, what we like to call founder market fit. She is so passionate about the startup community. She is so passionate about the event and creating something that is memorable, that people leave and go, oh, I feel so good from having been here. And Aww. to that end, you know, it's it's the conversations and the connections and building out the events. But what she just said about the volunteers is absolutely key because they have to also represent Startup Boston Week with that same love and passion and, you know, just being juiced up over 
I get to be here to help and listen and learn myself and be part of this great event. And so that is true leadership skills right there for someone who thought she hasn't been adulting that long. <laughs> I'm not an adult yet. It doesn't oh. count. <laughs> I'm only 29, so maybe like in a year I'll be an adult, but not yet. <laughs> you never turn into one, trust me. <laughs> no, seriously, though, I, I really take it in, Stephanie, because that is what creates a movement, is that leadership quality. So for those of you who are thinking that you want to do something in your community, remember, it's how people, how you make people feel, always, always, while you're adding the important things, the right information, getting the right uh, speakers, getting the right content for everybody that they need. But having that passion is what keeps bringing people back year after year. So let's talk a little bit about what the transition was like when you got the news that the pandemic was here, the city was shutting down, and there goes your beautiful event. Oh, yes. That was a great time. Um quite a few things happened. So the first and foremost is I definitely have to give a huge shout out to Christine Zimmerman. Um, she's been like my right hand lady since 2018. She's our head of marketing for Startup Week. And she actually was the one who called out, um, called it prior to the shutdown that this was something that we would need to have on our radar because the likelihood of having this conference in person was probably not going to happen. Um, so I'm so incredibly thankful for, for her foresight because it really helped in like even in January to start thinking and being like, OK, like what do we do if this goes virtual? Like what happens? Um, so we did start planning it early on. And it was a little bit of a process in terms of like actually figuring out if we could make this conference virtual, um, especially once the shutdown happened. So we did a lot of virtual events, like trial and error virtual events starting in March. Like the shutdown happened 10 days after the shutdown. We hosted our first virtual event. Did not go so great, guys. The tech, everything we did, just the reminder emails weren't linked correctly. It was it wasn't my and best this moment. Is why everyone, you do dry runs, dry runs, dry runs, dry runs, then dress rehearsals for oh, virtual, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah, definitely. But I'd also say too, like sometimes you're just gonna fall flat on your face, and it's gonna be public, and it happens. You know, the biggest thing is just like get back up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's really nothing at that point you can do. You're like, okay, guys. Sorry, did not go as planned. We'll do better next time. And this is what falling on one's face looks like. Isn't that good to know? Yeah. Okay. Put that, that out of the way. Yeah. Yep. You, know? yep. you, you basically, you know, at least in my case, I pour myself a glass of wine that night. I'm like, that happened. And then the next morning we're like, so what did we learn? This is what we need to do next time. And it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It'll be okay. Don't do it all the time. But it's one of the inevitable things of starting something is that you're going to fail. Um, and it's just being able to be okay with that because it and will happen. Yeah. And especially when technology is involved, platform technology, virtual technology, you've all been doing this for six months. So you know what we're talking about. All of a sudden, everything gets really shaky. Nobody's words match their lips. You know, power failure in somebody's neighborhood, you know, it all happens. It's live, you know. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. And we just got to embrace it. It's okay right. when it happens. Um, so what we did was we did a couple more virtual events. We learned something new every single time. And then in May, we actually did our first one day conference. It was our marketing on a budget boot camp. It was from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. We did nine events that day. And the sole reason for it was like, okay, if we can do like a one day conference, then we can definitely do a five day conference. So when that went well, then we like made the official announcement that we were going virtual. Um, we just did not want to pull that trigger yet until we like knew that we could deliver on that promise. And so what did you learn during that one week, boot, that one day boot camp? Yeah, there was, there was quite a different thing. I actually wrote a blog about it. Um, if you go to startupboss.org slash blog, you'll find my blog that gives you literally the playbook for how to organize a one day conference if you want it. Um, but the biggest takeaway is people are way more prone to attend events in the morning than they are at night. Um, like you might know this, Andy, because of your, well, you, you host Founders Live. You're yeah. also attending a lot of different events in Boston. So 6.30 p.m. Um, used to be the sweet spot for events because everyone would want to go to something after work. And at least for us, 
and I'm not sure what your experience is. I actually want to hear from you too in a moment. Um, but for us, like the big learning curve was like, okay, like 8 a.m. until like 2 p.m. is definitely like the sweet spot. And if you want to do stuff in the evening, you can, but you have to give them like more opportunities to show up. So for a start of week, like we're having like a, like a morning session and afternoon session, mm -hmm. because otherwise you have fatigue for being online, like for those like nine hours. And, and so who just, knew yeah. that sitting, you know, and, and that there would be such a thing as online fatigue, but it is for reals. And so, yeah, this is why I have to show in the middle of the day. I did, I don't know, about 10 shows at night and people were just, they were tired. <laughs> It's been a long day it's been online and as much as they wanted to come and watch and hear the person live, it was just like, I don't think I have anything left. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. So, I mean, for us, we could definitely say like, if you do like evening events, like for us, what we've learned is like, okay, you have to have a couple hours dedicated where it's like very clear takeaways. So we'll have like, you know, four events like in the afternoon, but all of them are going to end before 630 because at 6.30, people are signing off work. Sometimes because it is virtual, you'll be working on one screen and have something playing on the other, which happens, I'd like to be your main focus, but I understand I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just kind of like working around that and realizing people have you know, lives yeah. outside of their computer. And that's what we have, you know, that's the beauty of Founders Live, it's a pitch event. So people are there specifically to either cheer on the founders because they know them or cheer on the founders because they like to add wind to the sales, but also they really love hearing about these startups, their tech or non-tech, you know, products and services. And because we do the pitch in 99 seconds, then we have audience Q and A, you know, it, it, it makes for a lively, quick, fast paced, et cetera. And, and it works once a month. <laughs> Everyone should watch it. It's great. And that's a good point, Eric Cox. AJ, do you see Eric's comment? Maybe something to consider for Founders Live Boston, a day event. I like that. Ooh, Ooh. nice noon, lunchtime viewing. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> hey, it's easier for this host, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but, you know, I'm happy to party down. AJ and Robert and all everybody else, they've got their wine, their you know, cocktails in the back. You know, I'm, I'm the one operating all the buttons. Like, I can't, be, I can't be drinking and driving this at the same time. <laughs> I understand that, definitely. <laughs> uh, it's so exciting. So I'm just going to put this um, visual back up for everybody to see because I want you to take this in five days, 70 events, 250 plus speakers, 100% virtual, 100% free. And it all happens next week. And for those that are watching the replay, when we say next week, it's the week of September 21st. And you can see on the banner going down below, it's startupboss.org, hashtag SBW2020. And uh, on Twitter, it's at startupboss.org. So you, know, you can learn a lot and you don't have to be local. Do they have to be local to go? Oh, definitely not. We it's have people crazy. that are joining from around the globe. I'm That's thrilled. Cool. I'm so excited. That's, that is very exciting. AJ and I experienced that now too with the Founders Live is that, whoa, we've got this reach from all over the place. People are tuning in. It's, it's great. Wonderful. You got to highlight the Boston like talent here at a global scale. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. I would love to. You know what? That will be me Saturday after startup week, AJ. I understand this. <laughs> so tell us some more things that people can do. I mean, I love that you've got your trenches of, you know, morning and afternoon. What are some of the topics that people are going to hear about? Yeah, we have a lot of different ones. So the big thing this year is we actually added two tracks. So last year we had eight tracks. This year we'll have 10. So the two new tracks we added are data and then also students. So data is for data analysts at a startup company. Students is to really help connect all the students regardless as to what university or college they attend. Um, but a few of the other events that you know kind of stand out to me that I'm personally looking forward to is we actually have a fireside chat with Christina Lusoni. I'm so bad at pronouncing names, so I apologize, Christina, if I mispronounced it. But she is the chief people officer at Rapid7, and we have a fireside chat with her 
Thursday at noon. So I'm really excited to that. It's gonna be great for people who are really curious about what it takes to be a chief people officer um, at a startup. So you can learn a lot. We also have some awesome events such as like how to build a winning engineering team. Um, Paris Chandler, you may have seen her pop up a lot over LinkedIn recently, but she actually launched Black Tech Pipeline a few days ago. So she's nice. gonna be speaking on that panel. And the list really just goes on. It's all of the events are very much designed to give you like the how to playbook to really outline like, hey, this is what you wanna learn in 60 minutes. We're gonna tell you exactly how to do that. So that's what every single event has in common. And I love this because you are going to reach so many more communities that don't have the rich and vibrant startup community that we are so blessed to have here in Boston. And it didn't just happen, folks. This was uh, Governor Deval Patrick's initiative in the late 2000s. And he put together government council and said, we want this to be the hub for startups. And then Mass Challenge launched and so many other things were part of this initiative so they're silicon valley san francisco <laughs> <laughs> come on over and see how it's really done yeah, uh, they shall dial know, in watch yeah. it it's good <laughs> folks, you know, we're from Birmingham, alabama or cleveland ohio or you know other wonderful hubs and you want to just come and get an idea what you can bring to your community come see what stephanie's got going on at Startup Boston Week. You'll learn a lot. You'll meet some great people. And to that end, you know, networking is such an important part of the week. I mean, that's what I love so much about it. How are you going to give people, the folks, uh, folks, the chance to network? Yeah, definitely. So anyone who is registered for the event is actually going to be added to a Slack um, channel only for Startup Boston Week attendees. Um, so that channel, it will be opening up. I think tonight is the launch, definitely tomorrow morning though, latest. Um, but it'll be opening up right before the event. And then again, all during next week for the event itself and only the week following. So you'll have like two and a half weeks to really network with one another. We'll also have a lot of fun like icebreaker activities so that you can actually hop on calls with people one-on-one, -on -one, get to know each other a little bit more. Um, and then of course, like as Andy does on her show here, but the comments when you go and actually um, watch a session, of course, are always available for networking as well. So there's a lot of ways to really still make those connections. Like it is, it's such an important thing. And I want to make sure people meet more people. Right. So and you know, it's a in goal. Person, I, yeah, in person, I would have my phone LinkedIn app on and I would do the quick scan, you know, code mm -hmm. scan. And, and that's how I start connecting with people. Yeah, folks at the live events, virtual have your LinkedIn URL, pop it into the comment threads several times and say, let's connect. Yeah. Then you can just go and say, who did I connect with? Because, you know, it's a flurry of activity, but you can go back another day and see who you connected with, see where uh, potential collaborations or conversations could happen further. It's really a great opportunity to build your network because that network is your net worth. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that saying. That's a really good one. <laughs> oh, it's so important. And, and again, I don't know about you guys. I, I'm an extrovert, which is, of course, why I have the live show. But also, I hop on live events all the time and start yabbering with people. And I've met so many delicious people in the comment threads. But I've been doing that for years because I'm a Twitter goddess and I love a good Twitter chat. But you know, it is a wonderful way to meet new people. And you have to. And guess what? You don't even have to get dolled up for it. Right, you know, oh, it's the best. I mean, you know, Andy, I'm wearing pajama bottoms right now. <laughs> Me too. My it's hello, <laughs> hello kitty <laughs> bottoms. It's perfect. So, I also want to talk a little bit about how the founder journey has been for you, because while you have all this wonderful, beautiful energy and dynamic energy, going to this phenomenal event every year with some baby events during micro events during the year, you were also a co-founder of a business. So first tell us a little bit about Endash and then tell us about your founder journey, especially since it sounds like you got into entrepreneurship right out of college. So how has the transition been? What have you learned? How has it helped you grow? Because look folks, it really is the best personal development program out there because you get challenged on every level. How yeah. has it worked? How has the Tell us a little bit about Endash and the founder journey for you, Stephanie. Definitely. Such a loaded question. When you said that, I was like, oh, man. 
where do I start? <laughs> um, so Endash, as Annie mentioned um, earlier, but for those who have just joined, we are a content marketplace. So we connect brands to writers. Um, what really helps differentiate us from our competition is you actually can know exactly who you're working with. You're put directly in contact with the writers and someone on the team like myself will actually, you know, jump on a call with you, learn what you're looking, you know, to write about, what expertise you need for your writing team, and then we'll actually recommend those writers for you. So it really takes off a ton of time off of your plate when it comes time to actually build a group of freelance writers for your blog. Um, so in terms of the founder journey there, so what happened was is it's a little bit of a weird, I kind of stumbled into startup world, um, kind of like how I stumbled into Green Startup Week. So really, really rocking it during this interview right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but my life is a series of oopsies. What? How did I get here? You know, but it's really, we tend to so say, what? At the same time, though, we had a craving. We had a desire. We knew that we wanted something. We just didn't know what it looked like. You know, I'll frame it into, you know, a different uh framework, Stephanie, because I do, you know, cause I'll tell anybody, I was a reluctant entrepreneur. Every business I have had came to my door like a stray cat and yelled until I let it in. It wasn't like, oh, I want to go and do this. Never. <laughs> so, you know, you wanted to be challenged. You wanted to be fulfilled. You wanted to sink your teeth into something. So there yeah. you go. Definitely. Thank you for putting it like that. This makes me sound so much better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so what happened was, is I graduated college and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I graduated in 2013. And at the time I was, um, back when Craigslist was more of a thing, I was looking for like part-time jobs on that. So I found a few contract jobs in marketing because I thought maybe I'll end up doing marketing. I'm not really sure. I was also waitressing at Chili's at the time. Like that was my mainstream of income. And I was really trying to figure it out. And then I basically saw this posting for, you know, a part-time um, marketing quarter coordinator at this company called n Marketing, which at the time was a new agency started by the CEO, Mike Brown. So I got that job and I was doing that part time and eventually that became full time. And he really did an amazing job growing a successful agency. Um, and we did that for like the first two years. And then he had an idea for a platform, um, which now pivoted off as Endash. And he's like, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I'm like, OK, this sounds great. Like, let's go build something cool. Um, <laughs> Why and then not? we pivoted it and I joined and that's how it happened. <laughs> well, can we just say a shout out to him? Smart man asking Stephanie to join you. Very, very smart. I love that. You know, Stephanie, and, and you've learned, right? I mean, clearly you're a fluid person. You have what we call a high AQ, a high adaptability quotient. And so your ability to go with the flow, but you also connect dots. You see things that need to get done. You know, you really are ideal to, you know, for being a founder and, and also hanging out in the uncertainty is, is not easy for anybody. What moments have scared you the most other than startup week? Cause that's a lot to scare, but you know, within your uh, end dash role has, you know, scared you and kept you up at night. And how did you sort of reverse it with a good mindset hack? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely startup startup life um, is not for the faint of heart um, by by far definitely not so in the very beginning there was like two kind of scary things that happened so the first was is that I had no idea what I was doing of course um, but I also feel like most founders don't really know what they're doing a lot of us are just kind of making it up and doing a lot of research and a lot of talking and a lot of networking with people and really being like, okay, like, let me figure this out. Like, this is a new problem. I haven't, you know, figured out how to conquer quite yet. So a lot of it's just like taking it as you go. So I had to do a lot of research into what customer success even was, um, for instance, but finally think I've got it down. So that's good. Always learning though. So I'm gonna attend all the customer success tracks during startup week, of course, because I need <laughs> to learn more. Um, so I'm excited about that. But then the other part, too, is, I mean, there was definitely, like, the first, like, year was really rough. Um, I was really kind of nervous about making ends meet. So at the time, I couldn't really, I wasn't really getting paid a ton of money. Um, I was also starting Startup Week, so I had a lot on my plate. And then in order to actually pay rent, um, I was, like, a full-time kickboxing instructor. And that's what I did to pay rent. So that first year was rough. I think I made, like, 34 grand that year. A lot of yeah. oatmeal was eaten. It was especially for Boston, everybody. Somewhere else might be like, that's doable, not here. Oh, no. um, that was that, rough. <laughs> I have to ask you a trivia question. 
what did Stephanie Rulick do her first year as a startup founder? I ate a lot of oatmeal yeah. and it researched was. a lot. <laughs> That's what I took away, right? Oh, it was fun. I liked it. It was something new. Like I, I took a lot of kickboxing classes like the past years prior. Um, it was like a kickboxing gym, like not a fancy martial arts thing, yeah. Yeah, even yeah, though yeah. I, I do throw a mean punch though. So watch yeah. out. Um, I see. <laughs> You know, we were sharing this event on LinkedIn. One of your volunteers are like, want to find out how Stephanie does this and why we all love working for her. Who was that? Um, I believe it was Anjali. Yes, it was Anjali. Yes, yes. Uh, she's amazing. Nice. She actually volunteered day of in 2019. And then I roped her in and made her join the organizing team for 2020. Perfect. I was like, you're really great. You should be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> It was awesome. She's so incredibly smart. She leads the product and design um, track for Startup Week. She created all the events for that track. She is phenomenal. Um, I'm so, so thankful to have her on the team. Oh, my gosh. So what can we do even more to support Startup Week, which is next week, beginning September 21st? How can folks register? What you know, you can see right here, go to startup on the banner underneath Stephanie here, go to startupboss.org, share. Well, how can we add some wind to your sales? Yeah, so startupboss.org will take you, of course, to the event page. You can also go to startupbostonweek.com if you want to go and directly sign up. Um, either URL works, they're all the same at this point. We're all pointing all the traffic back as every good marketer knows. Um, but really like, I guess two things like the first is, is please sign up. It's free. You get to learn a lot of stuff. You get added to a Slack channel. Where you're going to network with even more people to grow your network. Um, you get to attend the opening party on Monday night to go and meet awesome organizations such as like Founders Live and 20 other organizations located in Boston. So you should go either way for the sole purpose of building your network. Um, and then the second ask is that if you could just share the event with your network as well. Um, network is a key word, apparently, in what I'm saying right now, but please share it. Um, it really is like a huge community driven movement. It's all grassroots based. Um, so just having more and more people spread the word and really kind of be like, hey, like, look at this awesome like event. It's free. You can learn a lot of stuff. You can meet new people. And also like Boston's great. So it's kind of checks all the boxes there in that one post. <laughs> if you want to volunteer or get involved and or and be ready for 2021 with Stephanie, you connect with her. I shared her LinkedIn link uh, URL in the comment threads. And of course, everything will be in the show notes. And um, please share away. I'm going to bring this up from AJ. Another final comment. Absolutely agree. As the great Reed Hoffman would say, launching anything new is like jumping off a cliff and assembling the plane on the way down. Just do it. Oh, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Nobody really knows what they're doing. And even, you know, those who do the heavy duty focus groups and the customers say, we're going to do this. When you launch your product or service, they don't do what they say they're going to do. You know, it's all, you have to have just the right frame You need to, of mind. You need to be adaptable. I love supporting this amazing event. I'm sharing the link now as well for going to start up boss.org and remember the hashtag sbw2020 that helps get it out as well i hope we see you guys on monday at definitely at the other events during the week but at the opening party where we'll be exhibiting yeah. founders live and many more and if you want to meet the woman who helped stephanie get started who helps so many people get started here in boston the one and only bobby carlton you'll want to be there on the 21st. So go ahead, get to that website, everybody, and get RSVPing and wherever you are, because it is free. You'd be crazy not to do this. Stephanie, this has been an amazing organ conversation. Oh my gosh, I got so excited. I stumbled over my words. <laughs> I am so happy, happy, happy. I'm especially happy that you tuned in today live, everybody. Thank you so very much. And to the replay viewers. You're amazing for tuning in. You're learning. I mean, what's not to love about Stephanie? Go connect with her. If you're local, go volunteer with the organization. If you're watching this and it's before 9 20, 1 20, go RSVP and come play with us here in Boston. Meet some great Boston founders, startup founders, employees, all sorts of fun things happening in this. 
If you have any questions, post them in the comments section. We'll get right back to you. And yeah, for those of you who are watching the replay, again, hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner. I'd be so grateful. And I also want to share with you that as a four times founder myself, I know what it's like to lay awake at night wondering, rah, rah, what do I do now? You don't need to struggle alone. You can have help to take your business to the next level, uh, you know, without wasting money, without wasting valuable time. I offer startup strategy sessions. There are these two hour jam sessions. Same thing with funding strategy sessions. I also offer pitch deck reviews so that you are ready for your next pitch event or for your next raise with investors. And I provide on-demand coaching. You just grab 10 minutes, 15, 30, 45, whatever you want. Boom, you get some of this Andy Delicious advice to help you with your business. You have no long-term commitment. You're a busy founder. We'll just go and make it happen. Get those questions answered. The uh, link to book a session with me, a free conversation, a 15 minute, are we a good fit convo? You know, are in the links, are, are in the show notes. I'd love to learn more about you and about your business. Cause you know, I got this curious mind. I love to dive in deep into what's going on. I wanna share with you also that this Friday, oh my gosh, look who's joining us on Fab Founder Friday. It's Nikhil Sagal, founder of Vast Minds. And this is a health tech company delivering cutting edge AI powered diagnostics. They are on a mission to improve health and wellness of the mass population via telemedicine and artificial intelligence. Nikhil is out of London. And I've got to tell you, has he had a year? He's got some great stories. He's also going to show us how his AI works, his special I don't know what to, technology to get, you know, what's going on with somebody's body so that you can get great care, even if you're in the middle of nowhere. So it's a great company. And I'm looking forward to sharing him with you on Fab Founder Friday, September 18th. Stephanie, this has been so much fun. Thank you for having me. I've had so much fun as well. I absolutely love your energy. I love the show. I'm definitely going to have to tune in Friday. I'm really excited. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And uh, founders everywhere, yeah, please know this is a tough journey, but it's a great journey. And you heard Stephanie's story. She's had all the oopsie daisies. They're great. You want to have those instead of the what ifs, okay? So keep going, stay strong, stay focused, and remember, you've got this. Cheers, everybody. Bye.